Colson Scooters, I'm Colson Smith, and in today's video, we're gonna be fragging a bunch of coral behind me here. Um, the original video, I was doing yeah, a bunch of coral for my tank, um, for the 20 gallon, and I happened to frag these corals and put them in the video, um, but the video ended up being super long, and I actually lost all of the audio from the video. So this video has no audio, but I did a voiceover on it all, so um, apologize in advance for that. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned for next week's video. Uh, we should be posting it on Monday because um, we are going to be buying all the coral from Top Shelf and putting it in that tank. And I bought some really cool corals. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But yeah, let's get into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Colson Scooters. I'm Colson Smith. This here is Logan's Aquatics. What's up? And in today's video, we're going to be filling out my 20 gallon aquarium. Um, so let me go show you it real quick. So boom, here is the 20 gallon. I did clean it all out recently because it was completely filled with bubble algae and it was kind of gross. Um, but there is no coral in here. There's a couple of zoas in here. Uh, most of the coral I had in here previously ended up dying or getting overtaken by the uh, bubble algae. Okay, so here is the 150 gallon saltwater aquarium that we're going to be fragging from today. Uh, I just have some frog spawn here and some hammers that we're going to be fragging and putting in my 20 gallon. Uh, we're just going to be doing the middle or the top one and the middle one because the bottom one is not actually ready yet. Uh, it doesn't have enough heads so we're really just going to be doing those top two. Um, and then over here I'm going to be fragging one of the gold hammers. The bottom one there is actually mine from my tank a while ago but I put it in here for my dad. Um, and then maybe we could frag some of these zoas in here as well. Um, but I believe we're just going to be doing the Euphelia today. I also have a few SPS on the rack over here that we're going to be putting in my 20 eventually, but right now we're going to keep it in my dad's tank. Um, I do want to frag some of these chalices we have in the tank eventually, but for right now we're just going to leave them in here. Um, other than that, uh, all the SPS is growing out really nicely, so we'll frag it when my tank's ready. That torch right there is not ready yet to be fragged, but once it is, we'll be adding a piece into my 20 gallon as well. Okay, so we also have this frog spawn here. We'll be fragging that as well. The left side is dying off a little bit, so we're going to frag that off, mainly so that way it doesn't spread to the other corals in the tank. Then I also have a space invader chalice back there. It was in my tank previously. Um, it's gotten a whole lot bigger in here, so we're going to be fragging that up maybe into one or two pieces um, and maybe giving a piece to Logan's Aquatics. Um, and I'm going to give my keep let my dad keep like the whole colony piece as well. Okay, now it is time to frag up these two um, frog spawns and putting them in our uh, bucket down here. So yeah, let's go. It's not a game, it's a red skin. So like I said, I did use the audio from all these clips, but um, this is just me basically talking about how I'm not going to be fragging that bottom one because it's not ready yet. I was just pulling them off the rock here so that would make it a little bit easier to frag them, keep them in the water, make sure they keep uh, staying wet so that way they don't dry out and die. Um, but here I'm just getting it ready, kind of pulling off the pieces um, off the rock just to try to get it a little better. There was also like this really weird shell that was stuck inside the um, frog spawn here. And I, it was a dead snail, must have got stuck and died, which is just pretty neat. But um, we're going to be fragging that. As you can see, the back sides of it kind of just died um, from the shade, from it shading itself. Um, but we're just going to frag off maybe like, I think it's four, three or four heads I fragged off for my 20 gallon. And I'm just using these uh, coral cutter scissors I have. Um, they're not the greatest. I need to get some actual coral cutters. But for right now, it's what I had and it worked. When you're fragging Euphelia, you do want to make sure you like score it a little first um, because if you just press down it, it'll actually crack it and like break it all the way through and sometimes it rips the heads in half, which can be a little bit of a problem obviously which kill, could kill your coral. Um, so you just want to be really careful, um, kind of score it and then um, as you can see I'm doing that right here. 
it's going very slowly and then I'll just eventually just go for it and break it off but um, we're gonna do that one do it to this one and then also the other frog spawn as well so one they're kind of like an octo spawn and the other one is more of a, a frog spawn but um, it ended up popping off the entire rock and I had to cut it there but um, eventually I got it off now it is time to frag the uh, just the frog spawn the regular classic frog spawn so here I am pulling it out of the tank um, this one as I said the left side was kind of dying a little bit so I wanted to get it off um, just at least to get it out of my dad's tank the dying part um, we ended up putting this one in my uh, sump of Fred. Fred is my porcupine puffer, if you guys don't know. And then the sump is actually just a 40 gallon tank, and I keep a bunch of coral in there. So we're going to put it down there to try to heal it back up, keep it back to life. Um, but here I am just going to tell them um, about the part that died, and I'm just going to cut it off. It's not dead, it's just there is a piece that's kind of just dying. So we're going to cut that off. But right now it looks pretty good. It's been a couple of days since I filmed this video. Okay, here I am just uh, showing the types of glue you should use. Um, I'm just saying basically that you want to make sure you only use super glue gel. Um, make sure it says gel on it. If it doesn't say gel, definitely don't use it. Um, you can do your own research, but um, as long as it's super glue gel, usually it's safe. Obviously, like I said, do your own research on what glue you should use, but that's the specific glue I've been using and I use. Okay, here I am gluing it down. Uh, I'm just going to show a little bit of a tip that you can do when gluing it to kind of help the glue dry faster. Um, you just pop a bunch of glue on, on the frag plug like this and then you're going to take uh, your coral and you're just going to kind of dab it on the glue and kind of hit it a couple times. There's my dog just watching me do this. I got a little bit of a witness but um, you can see I take the coral and I just kind of dab it on there a couple times. Um, just kind of stir it up. It helps dry it faster. It brings air into the glue to help it dry quicker. Um, also, believe it or not, if you keep the glue under water, it actually helps dry it quicker. So when you put it into your tank um, and hold it there, it'll actually dry it faster with the water. So when my hands are wet like this, stripping water on it, it'll help dry it a lot quicker. It's not a game. It's a Okay, now we're back at my 20 gallon aquarium. Um, I'm just gonna pop all the coral we just glued onto the frag plugs into the tank. Uh, just leave them in the sand bed for a little bit. Um, literally just left them there for a day just to get them, let them get used to the tank. They just got cut, so obviously they're not the happiest. Um, usually I'd recommend after you frag something to keep it in the same tank you fragged it out of. So that way you know it'll do well in there and it'll, it can grow back before adding it to somebody else's tank. Um, so just kind of let it grow in there. But my dad's tank and my tank are literally the same parameters, so I, I was fine with putting them in here. And in worst case, if they started to look bad, I can just walk into the other room and put them in that tank, um, let them come back. But um, here I am just kind of placing them all around randomly. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to be moving them literally the next day. Okay, I don't think I got this on film, but these were the pieces I cut off the Space Invader Chalice that I was talking about earlier. I cut off two pieces, uh, one for me, obviously, and then the other one I'm going to be giving to Logan's Aquatics, like I said. But we're going to keep it in my tank just to let it heal up for a couple of days. Um, that way, when he gets it, it won't end up dying, and uh, I'll know it'd be a healthy frag. Okay, now I have here a Weeping Willow Toads tool. It was actually gifted to me by a friend. So I'm just gonna be unbagging it here. It's a Weeping Willow, which is a really nice toad stool. 
um, with the like really long tentacles on it. Super nice. Definitely one of my favorites. Um, I was wanting one for a bit, and I know she had a nice one, so she ended up giving me a little baby from it. Um, but we're just going to be placing it in the tank, uh, letting it open up, and then I'll move it later, um, like I said, tomorrow. Alrighty guys, that's gonna wrap today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to leave a like as well and subscribe if you're new here. Make sure you stay tuned for next week's video um, so you can see what Coral ended up buying for my 20 gallon. But yeah, till next time, peace.